up you guys, After Chair Reacts here and today I'm going to be reacting to some more Stargate SG-1. This is Season 10, Episode 6. This is the 200th episode of the series, so it's hard to believe that we've done 200 episodes after this one. Um, so that's kind of cool. Uh, not very many shows have done 200 episodes. And I've only reacted to one show that's th that's had 200 plus episodes and that was Supernatural. So yeah. It's gonna be pretty cool. Let's get into the 200th episode. I'm not just interested in outer space. I'm from the outer space. They're gonna have Willie got Are we actually gonna be doing a follow up to this? Because that's fucking great. Starring Nick Marlowe as the Rye, <laughs> Colonel Danny. As a matter of fact, it does say Colonel on my uniform. Wormhole Extreme. Mana! We are the Furling. What? We thought we'd never get to meet you. No, you didn't! What? This is stuff I've never seen. I'm not upset. I thought I could make it work. Thermodynamic loop is feeding back into the planet. <laughs> We're still in a previous one, but I've never seen this shit. Oh no, the phone! Well, you exactly. gotta something big, catch people's attention, make them think the whole thing's gonna be jam-packed. I love jam. Oh, I get it. It's yet another playful twist on words in your Earth language. It, it makes us look stupid. You realize it's not actually us. Okay, okay, it makes the characters look stupid. I mean, do you really think the best way to introduce the heroes of the story is to show them causing a massive catastrophe? That's realistic. I don't care. Jackson, how often do we get to give notes on a big Hollywood feature script? I believe this okay, is it's a movie now? It's a movie. A uh, fictionalized, albeit okay. slightly ridiculous version of Stargate Command is an excellent cover for the real thing in the event of a security leak. Plausible deniability. Did you say slightly ridiculous? You're doing this. You have no choice. Just give the man five minutes. I'll get you out of this when the time comes. I've been looking through this and there doesn't seem to be any mention of a sexy female alien anywhere. I'm not even in this. <laughs> you know, the really unbelievable part is that anyone would consider spending millions of dollars on this thing. I mean, seriously, all these writers and they couldn't come up with anything better? I don't know, I've been watching a lot I mean, last episode. Lately, yeah. <laughs> Apart from one glaring omission, it doesn't seem to be that bad. Maybe we can make it better. How's it going? You done? It certainly seems to be packed full of jam. I knew I should have given you my first draft. The, the producer brought in the other writers. I thought you were the producer. Yeah, the real one. Uh, look, just be honest. I, I trust you guys. That's why I'm here. Just tell me what you think. I think the failings look like koalas. Come on, you, you must have some ideas. Just pitch them out. We call it spinning. I think you need a strong opening title sequence. Are you serious? No one does that anymore. <laughs> True. The title and get on with it. That is true. I was ready for today. Look, uh, no offense, but zombies have been done to death. No pun intended. Besides, this is science fiction. Dude, they haven't even gotten to Walking Dead yet. Tell check device, because that's what turned them into zombies. Oh, go for Marty. Oh, hey, Charlie, what's up? It's the studio. Just out of curiosity, what was the rest of the team doing while your character was fighting the zombies? Why is your character bitch. even in it? I'm just wondering. The executive is, huh? Oh, he wasn't in Charlie, the he's a great three episodes. Guy. He's the only one I trust. So what's the problem then? Our lead backed out. I mean, how am I supposed to tell a story without my lead character? Easy, just bring in a character to replace him. <laughs> what? You guys have to help me. How can I keep the main character in the story without actually having the actor who plays him? Well, you could have the other characters refer to him all the time. Maybe get him on the phone once in a while. Oh, yeah, right. I mean something cool, like um, face switching or body 
swapping. <laughs> As if anyone would believe that. Come on, you guys must have some real life experiences I can draw on. Oh, well, there was that time that Colonel O'Neill was invisible. So essentially what I think happened is that you were bombarded by the particle field being emanated by... This didn't happen? You were in the engine room standing right next to it when the device was turned on. That would account for the minute traces of radiation we've been picking up from you. But the good news is, I think I found a way to reverse the process. Sam, who are you talking to? Colonel O'Neill. I was just explaining to him how we're going to make him visible again. No, you know what? Jack's in uh, Hammond's office. I can't believe he did that to me again. You know, getting that cloaking generator off that mothership, that's going to be the least of our problems. Now getting Jack to help, that's going to be the hard part. Oh, don't tell me. Oh, yes. He likes being invisible. <laughs> You cannot remain this way, O'Neill. Why not? It gives us an advantage over the Gould. I can sneak around all I want, totally undetected. I give us the element of surprise. The bottom line is, I can do more for this planet invisible than I ever could as my own sweet salient self. I assume I'm staring at you stoically. Not buying it, eh? No. You are most transparent, O'Neill. Oh, I get it. Good one. I can see right through you. Don't push it. Hello, hand signals. I'm waving you over. <laughs> Okay, I've made the necessary adjustments. All I have to do now is initiate the sequence. Okay. Let's do it. Oh, yeah. This is better. Okay, that's it. SG-1, you are cleared to leave. Thank you. <laughs> they can't leave. They haven't finished reading my script. It's funny. I thought it said general on my uniform. You know you want, sir. You made another one. What are you talking about? I thought you said it was going to be fun. Not after his zombie idea got shut down. So uh, where are you guys all off to? It's just a recon mission, isn't it? Just a recon mission? This is no simple recon mission. This is no less than my 200th trip through the gate. Really? You're counting? You bet. This is going to be here. I feel like you, you would have gone through a few more times than 200. Fix it. Quickly. I'm on it. Indeed. Please tell me you have the gate working again. We're running another diagnostic, but right now we're stumped. Power's getting through to the capacitors, but for some reason the charge isn't holding. That's causing the control crystal to send feedback into the interface and reset the programming code of the base computer's dialing protocol. Whoa! That was awesome! Say that again! No. <laughs> oh. Uh, everybody take five. I, I gotta get that down before I forget it. The power getting to the flux capacitor, but feedback is not feeding back into the feedback face. This is gold! Hey, forget about the techno talk. No one's really interested in it. Mm. You're an alien, right? Exactly. And I know just what this movie needs. So how would you know what sci-fi fans from Earth would be interested in? Aren't you also an alien? Yeah, but I've been here quite a while. I think I know a good story when I hear one. Don't you want this movie to appeal to a broad range of people? From Earth. I have all kinds of fabulous adventures, none of which have been classified by the Air Force. Okay, shoot. Give me your best one. Right. I was in a stolen cargo ship on my way home when a solar flare from a nearby star wreaked havoc with my navigation system and I was forced to crash land on the nearest planet. In a bizarre twist of fate, I crashed right on top of the Gould who ruled that planet, which was fortunate because my ship was too badly damaged to repair and I needed help. The local villagers were very grateful. It's just the Wizard of Oz. They introduced me to a lovely, fair-haired Tokra who had been hiding out on the planet. She told me the legend of a powerful ascended being who supposedly lived in some distant mountains through a treacherous forest. Look, I don't have all day. Cut to the chase. All right, I met up with a number of my friends along the way, and after a dangerous and eventful journey, we finally come face to face with the ascended being. What can I do for you? At first, I thought I just wanted to go home, but now I've decided I'd quite like to be a part of something. A regular part, if you catch my drift. Oh, and uh, these guys have their own issues. Boys? <laughs> what the fuck? That's the Wizard of Oz. Oh. You've seen that one. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's my phone. 
Martin Lloyd. <laughs> I didn't hear a ring. It's on vibrate. Uh, yes, go ahead. I can sing. Okay, wh where were we? Scene 24. One of my favorite scenes. Go ahead. Interior bridge. The crew mans their stations. I'm picking up a strange energy. Okay, we've turned into Star Trek all of a sudden. It's about to explode. Weapons are at maximum. Damn it. What? Why? <laughs> a shockwave hit a straight for us. Can you reverse? Them? Why? Why? Why is this just showing? Best. Engine room. Warp speed. I'm giving it all I've got, Captain, but you're expecting a bloody miracle. Hang on, hang on. What? Okay, one, that's Star Trek, and two, it's ridiculous. What's wrong with it? The singularity is about to explode? Yes. Everything about that statement is wrong. Uh, how exactly is having weapons at maximum going to help the situation? The audience isn't going to know the difference. They love weapons at maximum. Never underestimate your audience. They're generally sensitive, intelligent people who respond positively to quality entertainment. I do not understand why everything in this script must inevitably explode. You guys may all know how things really work out there in the galaxy, but I know the film business. Explosions make great trailers. Simple fact. More explosions, better trailer. Better trailer, more viewers. It's not on vibrate anymore. What? That's ridiculous. Tell them to stop panicking. We're gonna sign him. Don't worry, I already put in a call to his manager. So trouble with Nora. No, Nora, she's great. Since Nick Marlowe is holding out, one of the new junior executives at the network has suggested we recast the whole movie with younger, edgier versions of the team. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Yo, dog, what you do that for? Dude, that hot chick was so totally a go. -go. Duh, I was still gonna tap that. You'll appreciate me, do you? Uh, I think you're so totally. What is he doing here? That's what I'm talking about. Yo, Wonder Bread, you got that really address far, figured out yet? I don't know. Like Chill, T. I'm like translating as fast as I can. I'm so sick of being treated like some sort of object to be worshipped. I'm a real person with real feelings. You no. Know, I don't think Mitchell likes me anymore. I'm pregnant. Uh-uh. No. Nope. <laughs> I need a latte. How about this one? We were in a cloaked cargo ship on a simple three-hour reconnaissance mission. Gilligan's what? Island, right? You got that from three-hour reconnaissance mission. I wouldn't have got Piece that. Advice. If you're going to rip something off, think of something a little more obscure. OK. <laughs> Call me Farbot. But they're going to have our move-ons on a planet if we don't. <gasps> Starburst the dry's out of here. Plus has been damaged. We're not going anywhere. Oh, Dran. Is this um, her show with thingy? Well. Oh, son of a hazmat. Yes. Okay, you got me. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> is that what that's supposed to be? Uh, I forgot what it's called. Oh, give me a break. I just got a text message from the studio. The foreign distributor went bankrupt. They're slashing my budget. In a text message? This totally screws up the end of Act 3. What happens at the end of Act 3? With these cuts, not much. Act 3 just ends. How am I supposed to do a movie without any actors? Correct me if I'm wrong on this, but is it not a fact of parallel dimension physics that each of us exists somewhere in some universe in whatever way, shape, or form we can imagine? Any way, shape, or form we can imagine. We've seen it for ourselves. There you go. Use your imagination. All right, people. <laughs> we created this multi-billion dollar facility under Cheyenne Mountain <laughs> so that we can use this thing. Anyone know how? Sir, we thought you knew. I do know this. We need to put together a team, starting with the most beautiful, battle-ready, scientific genius I know, Captain Dr. Samantha Carter. Reporting for duty, sir. What can you tell us, Captain? Well, at first glance, I suspect the device creates a stable wormhole between superconducting rings that have been placed in fixed positions elsewhere. Converts in the matter into energy at the event horizon. Once the initial vortex has subsided, of course. Just because my sex organs are on the inside instead yeah. of the outside doesn't mean that I can't handle. Provided, of course, that sufficient energy has been channeled to the device. Okay. Get to it. We need a bookworm adventurer who can say brains and guts in 27 languages. Why have I been brought here? This is not a... Ooh, what is that? The reason you're here, Doctor. And I was right. The pyramids really were landing sites for interplanetary starships and enslaved primitive human populations by posing as their gods. Well, we found the ring in the sand. These symbols, they look familiar. They're like constellations, don't you see? Here, 
If each symbol represents a specific point in space, then six of them would create a sort of box. Maybe. Beautiful. Maybe. Beautiful art. Marks the starting point. Is there a monitor that shows these symbols in detail? Over here, Dr. Jackson. Wait, this one seems different. We found the ring in Egypt. The pyramid <laughs> represents Earth. This symbol has to be the point of origin. It was under our noses the whole time. You feel so stupid. And now what this team needs is a leader, someone who will laugh in the face of his enemy, even when it's inappropriate. Colonel Jack O'Neill. I thought I told you I retired. Oh, I thought you said you were tired. Well, as a matter of fact, I am a little tired. There's no time for that now. You have a mission to lead. Right! <laughs> Sergeant, make it spin. S sir, it doesn't spin. It has to spin. It's round. But spinning is so much cooler than not spinning. I'm the general. I want it to spin. Yes, sir. Hey, look at that. Chevron 1 is lit up. I wonder what we're going to find on the other side. Whatever it is, I'll bet it's amazing. Aren't you the least bit curious about what's out there? Well, I'm just hoping we find some new meat for the team. Preferably something... Bald, mysterious, you know, the warrior type with lots of, you know, muscles. Chevron 7, also lit up. Holy Colonel O'Neill, you have a go. <laughs> Dear God in heaven, I feel so stupid. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. A whole movie made with puppets. Hey, I'm just Maybe saying... Maybe we can have Puppet O'Neill jump over a puppet shark on a one-third scale motorcycle. You know, we've been trying here. You're not listening. I'm talking about a twist, something nobody's expecting. You mean something like this? I was expecting that. Wow, I don't think anyone will see that coming. I did. No, nope, there'll be spoilers. Are you kidding? It'll be in the commercial. <laughs> when it comes to fighting crime, there's only one man keeping the streets safe while keeping it real. To P.I. coming this fall. I love it. I'm just not sure if the network, but I'll pitch it to them next week, and 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 we'll we'll see what they think. Oh, I, I have to get that. We'll talk later. They hate the ending. I have to think of something new. They could go fishing. Okay. Fishing? Yeah, it'd be the perfect ending. I mean, after that, anything else would seem pointless. This is great. I told you. Yep, it's good to be here. You weren't there. <laughs> What's the twist? No fish? I need something with more impact, something more moving. Everyone loves a wedding. <laughs> You know, if she doesn't show, people are going to think that you and I are... <laughs> what? Hi, Sanchez. Sorry, sir. Carter. Jack. Gotta have some fan service towards their couple. Shall we begin? Their ship? Yeah, right. If I want to torture the audience on purpose. The gate is back up and running. With permission, you keep these kids out of trouble, Jack. Here's an idea, Hank. Why don't you come along with us? Uh, no, sir. Yeah, come on. Uh, It'll be kind of like a special occasion deal. Come on with it. Yeah, that's it. Hey, Walter, come on, we're all going. <laughs> I don't have the right outfit. <laughs> you look fine. Just three, three, two, you're waiting, sir. The cake. It's all set. Hey, Marty! Why don't you come with us? Maybe find a little inspiration for the end. 
of your little movie. Um, I can't. I just heard from the studio the movie's been canceled. Oh. Oh, there's some heartbreak. Oh, that's too bad. Not for me. They decided to renew the series instead. Hey, let's move out. Ten years later. Okay. Well, that wasn't so bad. And that's a cut, everybody. That is a wrap on the 200th episode. Yeah. Yeah. Are you kidding? Hey, everybody. Guess what? The movie's back on. Yeah. <laughs> is this that way? Their way of announcing that there's going to be a movie? Seasons. Seven Saturn Awards for best uh, cable or syndication science fiction show. Who would have guessed? And I needed something even better to make you forget about the guy that fans love to watch for the first seven years of the show. I know he's here for eight, but, uh, you know, a lot of people say he just kind of phoned it in the, that last season. Anyway, I mean, I, I'd actually like to do some, uh, to do some writing. Maybe have a baby. <laughs> it just hit me. Sweet <laughs> And we can get away with that, too, because it's cable. What I think really makes this show what it is, is the chemistry with the uh, cast. Yeah. Oh, did you hold on. Uh, stop the tape. Who does he think he is? Will you tell that ungrateful little f bag to shove it up his f Yeah, let him try to get a job that pays this much. You weren't rolling, were you? Okay, um, what was I saying? Oh, oh yes. The cast. Holy That would be like a 19. That's it? You good? All right. Can I get my sandwich, please? All right. Hey, thanks, man. Science fiction is an existential metaphor. It allows us to tell stories about the human condition. Isaac Asimov once said, individual science fiction stories may seem as trivial as ever to the blinder critics and philosophers of today. But the core of science fiction, its essence, has become crucial to our salvation if we are to be saved at all. Okay. <laughs> hey, what's up, you guys? Quick interruption here. Um, as you are no doubt aware, these past few years have been tough on all of us. Um, and there are some things that none of us can hide from. Um, the cost of living, for instance, food and things like electricity, gas and water have all gone up and they continue to go up. Um, now, I don't really like to advertise this, but in order to afford keeping the lights on, the camera running, and to be able to provide you guys with new content like this very edit for example uh, I feel I need to let you guys know about how you can help support the channel and myself I have a patreon that if you pledge to you're helping support the channel and in return you can get a vast amount of content that you wouldn't regularly get on YouTube, such as full unedited reactions to my regular content, a ton of other shows and movies that you probably don't even know that I've reacted to. A link to this can be found in the description below, and it really does help the channel by keeping me and my very cute cats alive. Think of the cats. If you're interested, you can also check out our website, which is also linked below. Perhaps there's some shows and movies there that you didn't even know that I reacted to, but you always wanted to see. Please know, pledging is entirely your own choice, of course. You're welcome to stay here on YouTube and wait for the edits to come out. No worries, I'm not going anywhere. More edits are coming. Uh, I understand not everyone is in the position to support creators, but any help is welcome. Anyways, thank you for your continued support, whether it's through YouTube or on Patreon. You guys are the best. Now please, enjoy the rest of the video. Alright, uh, right. That was, uh, Stargate SG-1 Season 10 Episode 6, the 200th episode. 
that was great. I really enjoyed that. I really love when they, you know, don't take themselves seriously. And this was the culmination of them, like, making fun of themselves. And uh, this was just a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it a lot. Um, and you know what? We met, we met the Furlings. Maybe it wasn't real, but we met the Furlings. Um... This was great. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that you guys are going to mention in the comments. Um, yeah, this was good. I enjoyed it. And it was nice to see Willie Garson again. Um, may he rest in peace. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you guys thought. And I'll see you in the next one. Uh -oh.